Some of my meeting calls in your class right now because I know the history, but you can just call it microeconomics. Um, it's basically about demand and supply. Now, if there's somebody in this room who hasn't heard about demand and supply, I'd be vastly astounded. But we need to know how to use it. In fact, as I say, I don't want to work. This is the last time we think about demand as wanting something. That's pitiful. Wanting something, what? Wanting something? That's not demand. What is demand? Okay, so we have to figure this out. Right? And it turns out, historically, Aristotle, like I have to show you a quote, said, what is it that makes commodity, the exchange value? Why do commodities exchange one to one? Why does 12 eggs exchange for one gold, for example? That happens. What is there? There's something measurable between the two of them. And Aristotle says, it's demand. Aristotle says, the problem is Aristotle doesn't tell us what he means by that, which is a bit of a pain, you have to kind of figure it out. But basically, Aristotle, 350 BCE, demand, right? Ever since, demand, 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 demand. But it awaits a guy named Marshall in 1890 to actually clarify the whole thing. Okay? So you would say, and this turns out to be not useful, but it's okay in everyday speech, the price of gasoline goes up. So the demand for gasoline goes down. We could say that. That's what everybody would say. That's as much as everybody knows. And Adam Smith and a lot of people would have said that kind of thing. But Marshall tries to clarify things. Because first of all, you can say demand is what you want. But is it? Is it? You know, would you would you want a yacht? Yes, I want a yacht. Is that demand? No, I mean you can't buy a yacht. So there's a you know. Just wanting, this is not, the world is not window shopping, just wanting a yacht isn't demand. As Adam Smith says, you've got to have a man, he actually uses this, a man want, might want, um, how does he put it? I think he calls it a horse and six, uh, a carriage and six, meaning a carriage and six horses. Everybody would want one, but who can afford one, right? You no, know, so, so, you know, when you say that demand is wanting, you're completely missing the point. I mean, that, Anyone can want anything. I could want to go to the moon. Big deal. You know, in fact, I, would, I demand to go to the moon. You know? It doesn't mean anything. So the first thing is to understand what the relationship is. What determines my wanting anything? Is it my preferences? Yeah, there's some of that. Is it the money that I have? Is it the income? Is it the price? Right? So I could really, really want something. Um, but I don't have the money to buy it. Or I could have really, really good something, have immense amounts of money, but it's way too expensive for some reason. So it's all these things. Or I could really, really want something, and I have the money to buy it, and it's really expensive, but I can buy it. But why would I? Because there's something else I like more that I can also buy. So this totally confuses the matter, all right? So here's the deal. Marshall says, again, you know, solving a problem that has gone on for like 2,300 years. Demand is this. It is the relationship between price and quantity. It is the response, the quantity response, how much you would buy, this is how we define it, how much you would buy for a given price and all prices. Right? Not just one price, but all prices. So that, um, and, and then it says ceteris paribus, which means all other things equal, ceteris other paribus equal. All other things equal. Because basically said, yeah, I recognize that how much I would buy, like if I'm going to go to, let's say, if the Leafs were playing the sixth game here in Toronto, okay? I Let's say I love the Leafs, which I do not. But no matter, let's say that I did. Uh, the question, the demand question is, how many tickets would I buy if, um, given the price of the tickets, right? So if the tickets were $10, I'll tell you what, I don't even like the Leafs, but it's the sixth game of a playoff, I would buy like 30 tickets and invite all my friends. Because that would be cool, right? That would be really cool. I could do that. So I would buy 30 tickets. If the tickets were like 30 bucks, ah, I might take five friends. If the tickets were 100 bucks, I'll take one friend. So I'll buy two. If the tickets were like a couple hundred bucks, I don't have any friends left. It's just me going to the game, right? But that's the thing. That's what demand is, right? 
But Ceteris Paribus, assuming I have the income, assuming the Blue Jays aren't playing who I might like better, and therefore I won't see the Blue Jays, right? And of course the price of the Blue Jays will depend on whether I want to see the Blue Jays or this. Or I'd rather go out on a date, which might be a whole lot more fun than watching the Leafs lose, which is what I would have assumed. I would have been totally amazed. You know, as I was saying, I was thinking about other class, I thought you guys were unbelievable last day, in the sense that, think about it, what is the opportunity cost of sitting in this class on Monday, which was the seventh game for the Maple Leafs, and they were ahead, if anybody looked it up on the internet, by the time the class was in, I think by 8 o'clock or so. This is like, you know, a total eclipse of the moon and the sun and everything else at the same time. <laughs> And we're going to sit in this room and miss it. Aliens have landed, and you're going to listen to me? The Leafs are in the seventh game of the playoffs. That'll probably never happen again in your lifetime. <laughs> so think of the opportunities for us. I couldn't believe it that you guys just didn't say, hey, sorry. And I would have told the you all walked up. Yeah, I got it, and I got it. Other than the question is, why do you like the Leafs in the first place? That's another one. But you know, I would totally get it. The opportunity cost was immense. You're not going to see that again for many, many years. You haven't seen it here. So the point is, um, these are other options, and Marshall recognized that. So for us, listen, when I ask you what demand is, this is not because this is the way Marshall will find it, and economists have forever defined it since because it's so perceptive and clarifies the matter. It's because this clarifies the thinking of 2,500 years. People struggle to get this idea, and Marshall got it, fine, bang. And everyone went, whoa. Yeah, that's what we've been trying to say for all these years, right? That kind of thing. So when I say what demand is, demand is not wanting something. And really, I should have the right to shoot somebody right there in the class if they write demand is wanting something, because that is so insane. Demand is, you can say it's the relationship, or you can actually say it's the quantity, you should say it's the modern test. It is the quantity response to a given price for every price, set as parents. Holding all of the things constant, for example, preferences, income, the price of other goods. Everybody, that is demand from this moment forward. It is for you to think about why that is incredible and why that is useful and why we can use that to think about things. Right? So for example, you know, as we're going to talk about in the class, you know, somebody was mocking me, one of my students in the evaluation, but saying, you know, I was saying you. We're going to have a pub night. We're going to have a pub night. We're going to rent a room. And we're going to have a pub night. How are we going to do it? We're just going to have a pub night. Let's have a pub night. No, we're going to figure out the demand for a pub night. We're going to take a survey of the public, right? To find out how many people might come to my pub night. I don't want to put up like a couple thousand dollars renting a room, buying a beer, getting a bartender, and so on, and have nobody come to my pub night, or even worse. I don't want people coming to my pub night and I'm charging them a dollar and just basically making 2,000 bucks when it turns out I could have got 2,000 people for two dollars. I could have made lots of money, right? So I want to know what I can charge them. So I need to know the demand function. I'm not going to go on the street and start, you know, interviewing people like, would you like to come to my pub night? This is like a Scarborough. They're not coming, right? So I've got to find the relevant people. I want to find students. I'm not going to interview them today and then plan on having a pub night three years from now. This is completely irrelevant. You have to change prices and change and all this kind of thing. I'm going to keep all the other factors constant. I'm going to focus on the group that would likely come to the pub night. I'm going to find out that I'm going to construct a demand curve for them. I'm going to have a survey which says, how many beer would you buy on June 22nd if such and such a place if the beer is 50 cents? How many would you buy for the beer 75? How many would you buy if it's a dollar? So I can just do, I can give you guys a survey right here. And in fact, I would find out if I took all that stuff, you'd answer. If the beer was 75 cents, I'd buy three beer. And I'd add up, somebody else might buy two, somebody else might buy five. I'd add that up, and I could figure out for every single price the total amount of beer that would be the quantity demanded at each price. And they would have not only that. At 75%, 75 cents, in this room I could sell. 325 beer. But if it was $1.50, I would sell 125 beer. And if it was 50 cents, I would sell 562 beer. Right? So I would know that. 
Then I would look at my cost function and figure out what I'm going to do next, right? So this is what it's all about. Focus. Now, and then I would say to the class, let's put together this survey. And it turns out, I'm going to reinforce this. Marshall, for reasons we'll discuss later, thought that price was a function of quantity. That what you paid was a function of how much you had. And there's something to be said for this, but let's leave it alone. Modern, and that's why, by the way, when we draw a demand function, we always draw it like this. Because of Marshall. Uh, all right. Marshall does this. And this, this function right here I'm going to show you, with price up here, this would be the price of x. Usually you don't have to say x. And this is the quantity of x. This diagram, Marshall the first. There was one person before him, but he made a tragic mistake. You know what it was? He wrote in French. <laughs> and in those days, Everybody who was serious in economics was English, and they couldn't read French. So uh, this guy just disappeared. Don't we know? In fact, he, I'm not sure if it was him, but I think it might have been him. His name is Dubois. He, uh, one of these guys, another guy who actually wrote in German, said some, did something else on press. And this is like in the 1840s, well before the 1870s when this started, started appearing. Wrote in German. Nobody bought his book. He sold like 42 copies and bought the rest of the America and died unhappy. Now people look back and say, my dad thought that guy was smart. But he was German. Bad mistake, right? <laughs> okay, so Marshall first got to do this. Quantity on this axis, price on that axis. So here is, but for Marshall, he would say, for the first one, let's say it's a beer, I would pay $3 for the first beer I ever bought, right? In a particular day. But then, if I was going to buy a second beer, I would only actually do it at this three dollars. I would only pay two dollars for a second beer, right? And in terms of actually, that is pretty sharp because if you think about it, let's work out in the hot sun. Like I love heat, 105 degrees, rain on. And then I like, just let's get out there, play basketball, run for two hours, and just sweat ourselves dry. Then let's go to the bar. How much would you pay for that first beer? Three dollars easy, right? Um, then. How about the second one? I'm still first at $2.50. The third one, maybe $2. Now I'm kind of getting full, cool, right? The fourth one, now yeah, I won't pay a dollar, right? I would only pay a dollar. The fifth one, I wouldn't buy that. I'm not going to buy that a beer unless it's only 50 cents, right? So Marshall sketched this out like this. This is the demand function for Marshall. Because the more beer you had, the more notice because he looked at the margin, not the total beer. When you go into a bar, you say, the bar has selling beer at $1.50. And that's how you think of yourself, that every beer you buy, you're paying $1.50, so it's worth $1.50, but it's not. The first beer is probably worth $3, so you buy the beer because it's $1.50. The second beer is worth $2.50, so you buy the beer because it's $1.50. The third is worth two to you, so you buy the beer. The fourth is worth $1.50, and you're paying $1.50, so you buy it. But when you get down to it, why do you stop drinking beer? Because the next beer is only worth a dollar. I don't want another beer. You know? Why would I? It cost me a dollar. You know, I, I, I pay a dollar fifty. I'm not paying a dollar satisfaction. That's Marshall. That's how you construct the demand curve. So, in this case, notice, price for him was a function of quantity. We'll talk about that later. We say the opposite. But notice, Y in mathematics is always a function of x. The vertical is a function of the horizontal. This is called the independent variable. This is called the dependent variable. But in economics, it's up for modern economics. And this is because of Marshall, because he's the guy who first put it together. Now we say quantity is a function of price. That's the modern way, right? So notice our demand curve forever has price in the vertical because Marshall thought it was the other way around. And for us, quantity is a function of price. Quantity is a function of price. Now here's my survey. I'm telling you right off the bat. You want to have a club night? You want to have a survey? Are you going to put this, if you put the survey up and say, how much would you like to pay for one beer? How much would you like to pay for two beer? How much would you like to pay for three beer? What kind of an answer do you think you're going to get? How much would you 
do have to pay for it to the people. Ten cents? <laughs> you know, really. What am I going to say? Yeah, I'd like to pay ten cents. You just ask me. No, that's no good. No good at all. I don't get any kind of answer. So what we're going to do the modern thing is the survey will say, if the beer is $1.50, how many will you buy? If the beer is $3, how many will you buy? Everybody can answer that question. Right? So that's the question. Price, quantity is a function of price. Number one, demand. Quantity is a function of price. Now, next. You think, if you thought about this, Adam Smith has a demand curve. He says, and for you guys would say, um, the price of beer went down, so my demand for beer went up. Not so. And you know, there's a mess, that's a mess. Right? Smith's idea of demand and supply is this. This is demand for Smith. He has one point. Read his one point. Just like it's like the demand for gasoline. What is the demand for gasoline? If you say to me, the demand for gasoline goes down because the price of gasoline went from a dollar to a dollar twenty-five. The demand goes down, but the demand doesn't, as you can see. The quantity demanded goes down. Every the quantity demanded goes down. This is no good to us because here is if you call this demand. Here's the price and this is demand. What if the price is here? Now tell me what, what's, what's the demand, right? Tell me, what is it? You don't know because you've only got one demand. But when you have a demand function like this, it's the quantity response to price for every single price. That's what demand is, right? So then we can say, once I do that survey, I can say, you know what? If I charge $1.25, that's the quantity demanded right there. 225. If I charge 210, the quantity demanded is 110. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is what Marshall really made a huge leap over everybody before him. Everybody before him, by the way, Marshall sometimes is a little sloppy in his, in his, in his uh, writing too, but no matter. He understood what he wanted to say. And for the most part says it. And then is this, we never use the term demand to as, as a response to one price. That is quantity demanded. Demand is the price, the relationship between price and quantity for every single price. Everybody? So then we know, you know, that's the pub night of gasoline. If the price of gasoline is $1.25, we sell a million liters of gasoline. If the price of gasoline is a dollar, we sell 1.2 million liters of gasoline. Right? That's demand. Now notice, it also depends on the center of Paris. Leave that aside for now. Because we're just going to stay in two dimensions. Okay, now here's the thing that's going to happen. I'm going to burn you guys every chance I get. You need to know this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to constantly burn you. I'm going to burn you right now. All right? You're looking at demand. You see demand? There's demand on the board. When the price of beer falls from $2.10 to $1.10, what happens to demand? Nothing? Who said that? Are you sure you're right? What about the rest of you guys? What happens to demand? We have another nothing. What about the rest of this group? Nothing. Nothing. Is there anybody who says anything other than nothing? What kind of answer is nothing? It's the right answer, as it turns out. Nothing. Did you see that demand curve change? No, but I promise you, I would like to have you guys bet me five dollars a piece that I can't fool you, but I'm going to. Either, probably to later today, within half an hour, I'm going to burn you to the ground on just that fact. I'm going to save you the price changes and you're going to save the demand changes. Right? Tell me that I'm wrong. Right? Sure, you understand. Tell me you're going to do it. And then I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to do it at the exam. I'm going to burn you again. Right? So here it is. This is incredibly important. Demand is the relationship between price and quantity for all prices. If the price of the commodity changes, demand doesn't change. Flat out. Okay? Okay, what is your. Now let's go back to this. Um, 
What have we got that would be some super technology? Oh, you know what I want? I mean, it's just astounding. I mean, I love modern TV. Because when you think of the modern TV, I don't need another TV. I don't need one. But I intend to buy one. Simply because, you know, for $1,000, you can get something that cost like $50,000 10 years ago, right? It's the only reason I'm not buying TV is I want Wi-Fi. I've been using computers for like four years, right from the beginning, everything. And I, you know, I enjoy them, but I, I really like to enjoy computers with Wi-Fi. That's the real cool thing for me. I want a TV that is Wi-Fi. I want to put my TV anywhere in the house, and I want a Wi-Fi to see if I do it. That's what I want to do. So for the last number of years, I keep going around saying, have you guys got Wi-Fi? And I say, oh yeah, yeah, no, no. And they can't even understand what I'm talking about. You know, but basically, I want a TV with Wi-Fi. I do. What's my demand for the TV for the Wi-Fi? Tell me. Huh? Hold me up. Help me up. I'm falling. I'm falling. We just burned your butt right now. But thank you for speaking. No, no. Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I love it. Don't be embarrassed because you, you, you spoke up and it's more honor. I have six sisters. I have a twin sister. I have a sister that's a year and a half older, but it's a year younger. And just like that. Like, I have a lot of sisters. And when I was a kid, when I went to a dance, I danced. I had to get out there and dance. If there was a woman sitting down, my sister said, you ask her to dance. And if I went over there, and she said no and shut me down, and I had to walk across the floor, too bad. They said, you did your duty. All right? You did your duty. That's it. And the rest of you need to think about that, right? Okay, good. But notice what he did. He slipped up. He said, demand. He meant quantity demanded. Everybody? And you will slip up too, so be careful. Oftentimes I'll be doing stuff that I'll just be playing you and boom. Okay, where were we? What were we asking? What is my demand for TVs? Huh? No, I didn't. No, but wait, wait, wait. That was an hour ago. A long, a million years ago. No longer true. What is my demand for TV? What do you need to know? I'm going to try to do is, I demand wireless TV. But if a wireless TV is $50,000, people are not buying this up, right? If it's $50,000, I don't have any demand. I don't want it, right? So right away you realize whether you like it or not, even if you think demand is just wanting, it's not. If it's $50,000, I don't want it, right? I have to sell my house. Ridiculous. So then the, the demand would get to say, well, what's the price? People I know get really annoyed with me because they'll say, do you like such and such? And I'll say, what's the price? Because of course, you know, yeah, I, I like that, but if it's $20,000, I don't like it. If it's $2, I love it, right? You know, that's the thing. So demand, I should say, how many TVs would I buy if it was wireless and it was $2,000? Hmm, like 50 inches or something. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll buy it. I'll buy one. A thousand dollars, maybe I'll buy two and I'll give it to a friend or a relative or something. You know? Um, I used to do that. I used to find places that were really cheap and I'd get it. Or like my, for my sisters, I would always buy them on sale, right? And I'd get these things on sale. Of course, I'd always get them at half prices. A friend told me, I said, sales are the greatest thing on earth. And the friend said, no, clearance is the greatest thing on earth. <laughs> so I'd get this incredible stuff for all my sisters because we're all, you know, this and that. And they would bring it, but of course I always had the original tag on it, right? I'm always giving you a fifty dollar gift, even though it only cost me fifteen, right? That's the whole thing. So basically, my demand it's what I would buy for a certain price. So when I say what is my demand for Wi-Fi TV, it'd be I buy one for two thousand, two for a thousand, um, you know, four for five hundred maybe. You know, for Wi-Fi TVs were like fifty bucks. And I was the one who could buy them before everybody else. I'll probably like 50, 10 of them. And I'll give them away to my friends. They'll think I'm wonderful, right? They'll be amazed. Just like, you know, I would buy the stuff for my sisters really cheap, and they would be amazed. So the thing is, your demand depends on the various prices that are buying the demand. Everybody? Again, 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 think about it. This is not accidental. This is very important. It's the distillation of you know 2,500 almost years of Western thought. Uh, it's incredibly well articulated. It's the means to be successful in business. That's why you need to know. We're going to talk more about. It. Let's take a five-minute break.
that'll keep you from another half.